Good morning. You are back with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Uh, we are um, meeting at this moment to uh, take a look at draft 1.3 um, after Legislative Council had an opportunity to incorporate some of the changes that we uh, decided upon earlier today. Um, this is uh, intended to be our, our final walkthrough of the bill. Um, and uh, before we move the bill out. And uh, before we get started on the walkthrough, I wanted to just extend a sincere thank you to the members of the committee for all of your hard work and um, respectful dialogue, respectful differences of opinion, uh, helpful suggestions. Uh, this has been a very, um, a very intense process. This bill that we're working on is, is one that impacts a lot of our neighbors and a lot of our um, very important community members. And, uh, and so I very much appreciate the respect and, um, and uh, collegiality that you all have brought to this conversation. And, um, and I think it bodes well for the, uh, for the working of the committee that we have been able to have differences of, of opinion and, uh, and work around them and work through them. So um, thank you in advance for your great work on this. And um, if folks are ready, I think you can find the draft 1.3 up on our committee page. You may need to hit refresh because it is very fresh. Um, so Becky, if you can just remind us what the timestamp on the document is so that we all know that we have the correct draft. Sure, so it should be today's date, April 14th, and the timestamp is 10.54 a.m. Okay, so we're looking for April 14th. It'll be there momentarily. I think I'm, I'm just gonna have us pause for a moment and wait because if there are folks who are um, following on YouTube, I wanna make sure that people have the opportunity to have the latest draft in front of them as we go on this final walkthrough since I gather there have been a fair number of folks following on the outside. In this moment of pause, I'm reminded about how, how vastly different our work life is in the legislature now than it used to be. Um, it used to be we would have long pauses like this in committee because we needed to wait to go down the hall to the copier machine and make 11 or more copies of, <laughs> of a 30 page bill. And um, so <clears throat> in many ways, I feel like our, our work processes are so much more efficient now that we can transmit these things electronically. Okay, I am seeing uh, draft 1.3 with uh, April 14th, 1054 timestamp. Is everyone seeing that now? All right, Becky, take it away. Uh, so Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Uh, this is draft 1.3. Um, I highlighted all the changes in yellow and one of the changes you'll see throughout is the change from uh, VPIC being a committee to commission. Um, so uh, that will show up uh, kind of globally throughout the document. Um, 
so on the first page, a lot of the changes here are referencing that change. Um, I've changed the purpose of the bill to also reflect that the title of the committee is, is being amended um, and that the title of the, the chapter is amended to the Vermont Pension Invent Investment C Commission and um, the reference to committee throughout uh, will be changed to commission. On page two, I already see a mistake, which will be fixed by the editors. So I will, uh, sorry, I was rushing, <laughs> rushing to get this done. Um, but uh, in the definition of independent, um, I have clarified on page two, line six, that it is not uh, an individual um, has a direct or indirect material interest in the plan if that individual is a beneficiary of the plan and I've removed any <laughs> reference to the individual's uh, spouse, parent, child, sibling, or in-law uh, being a beneficiary of the plan. Um, there was also a, a word repeated on line nine, um, consultant was in there twice, so I, I removed that. Um, and there was a reference to just um, the individual being an owner. Um, so I clarified that to be owner of a publicly traded company because that is what is referenced in, sub in the next subdivision. Um, so those are just some clarifying changes. Subdivision C is uh, <laughs> not, a, not a complete sentence. So I'm going to read to you what uh, I meant to write and this will be changed by the editors. Um, so it should say an individual shall be considered independent pursuant to the subdiv subdivision three if the individual spouse, parent, child, sibling, or in-law is a beneficiary of any of the plans if the individual files an annual disclosure report to the commission. How are folks feeling about that? That was one of the decision points that we made this morning. Okay. Um, so moving on to page three, um, the again, there's changes from committee to commission. Um, and in subsection A, the commission is now an independent commission. Um, top of page four. Uh, so this is reflecting some of the changes that were discussed yesterday in terms of the membership. So um, the municipal and school employer members, it now uh, reflects that these are one member representing a municipal employer and one member representing a school employer. Um, and then the next changes here are just with respect to uh, changing the name to commission. Um, on page five, uh, there are uh, is language relating to member terms. So um, I have added an alternate here to all of the uh, term requirements. So all members and alternates of the commission shall serve staggered four-year terms. Um, a member or alternate appointed uh, to fill a vacancy shall not be deemed to have served, served a term for the purpose of the subsection. And then there's some new language that says members and alternates of the commission shall be eligible for reappointment and shall serve not more than three years, provided, however, that any term served as an alternate shall not be used to calculate a member's total term limit. All right, committee's feeling peaceful with that, reflecting what we discussed earlier. Okay. okay. And then members and alternates of the commission may only be removed uh, for cause pursuant to rules adopt, adopted by the commission. Um, the next changes in subdivision two are just um, the changes from committee to commission. Um, the top of page six, uh, just clarifying here that both members and alternates shall serve There's. Uh, until their successors are appointed. Um, so the previous language just referenced members. Um, the uh, next substantive change is on line 18. So five concurring votes are necessary for a decision of the commission at any meeting. Um, 
except that any decision of the commission relating to setting actuarial assumptions uh, pursuant to section 523B1 of the title shall require six concurring votes. So that is the supermajority requirement for that uh, particular task. Peaceful with that, folks? Good. All right. Um, page seven are uh, all, all uh, technical changes from committee to commission, uh, as, as is page eight. Um, so page um, nine, we're getting to the powers and duties of the commission. So with respect in subdivision two, line 17, on the asset allocation study, uh, the study is submitted to the House and Senate Committee on Government, Committees on Government Operations, not to the entire General Assembly. And then um, I have changed the language to say that it shall be made publicly available rather than referencing a particular website. Perfect. Um, the next substantive change. Um, is on page 12 with respect to the annual reporting requirements of the commission. Uh, and I, I think I went over this before the break, but uh, the commission shall send to each participant or beneficiary of each plan a written or electronic copy of the reports um, in the format authorized by the participant or beneficiary. The report shall be consolidated with any other reports required to be sent by the commission to the participants or beneficiaries of each plan. That looks great. That's very responsive to uh, several suggestions that we heard from around the table. Uh, Representative Anthony. Uh, just an observation. I uh, had uh, thought, <clears throat> and I know it came up as a comment, that communications uh, with uh, beneficiaries and members oftentimes comes from the uh, department um, of human resources. And so the language you just read, uh, Becky, limits the uh, bundling of only documents coming from the commission. I'm just wondering if you might, if that might uh, be better, uh, not uh, specifying uh, mailings from the commission, but rather uh, other communications with the members and beneficiaries, uh, because it's not only the commission that communicates with them, uh, a, a minor uh, a change. I don't think it changes the intent of bundling. Um, that might be a more substantive question because I, for somebody at DHR, because I don't know how often information is provided to beneficiaries of the plans. Um, so this is really just getting at like any annual reporting requirements, but okay. if there is... Uh, uh um, if there are more frequent uh, mailings, then I think there could be some sort of some logistical problems with limiting it to to one time a year. Um, so, if, I, I think you could look into that. I just I just don't know if that would create any any okay. administrative difficulties. I just heard from some uh, friends who are beneficiaries that they do get a mailing once a year, but I don't want to upset our progress here on that. Uh, niggling a point. Uh, Representative Cooper. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You caught me just as I was going to lower my hand, but I think, Peter, what you're talking about comes from the Treasurer's Office, the Retirement Division, doesn't come out of human resources, and that might be one of those things that wires get crossed on to some degree. I, I apologize. You're right. I, I, I forgot that it's actually the retirement division, not HR. Thank you. Peaceful with us for now, folks, understanding that we can always change it if, uh, if it becomes clear in the future uh, where, where we might bundle these mailings. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, can, I, I just want to raise the flag that this could be a significant expense if a whole bunch of the people elect to go written. Most of the communication I think that people get from the retirement office now is uh, 
electronic almost mandated. So mm -hmm. the expense might be an issue that you want to consider here at some point. I think it was Rep Lefebvre who suggested it's uh, it's good to have that as an option uh, for people to still receive uh, their information in writing. Um, so I guess I would recommend uh, leaving this here until we hear otherwise from uh, either the Office of Retirement or the Commission. Um, so section two, uh, I'm noticing that the title needs to be changed to commission, so I will make sure that is done. Um, but otherwise, there are no uh, substantive changes here. Um, uh, section three, uh, subsection A, the written policies that the commission is developing, uh, I've changed this to that the that should be made publicly available and I've removed any reference to a website. Um, in terms of the consultant that's being hired to review the operations of the commission, they will now be looking at the compensation of the commission chair and commission employees. Um, there were no changes in section four. Um, section five, I uh, just changed the references from uh, committee to commission. Uh, no changes in section six. Uh, section seven, so we're on page 16 now. Um, there are changes from uh, commission to committee. And this section, just as a reminder, is the uh, relates to the teachers retirement board. And there is a discussion about the standards of conduct referencing the committee, the commission standards of conduct. So um, on page 17, I have removed uh, the reference on line seven to uh, members of the committee uh, to just clarify that this is just talking about the that individual retirement board. Uh, because the the standards of conduct for the commission are now in the commission's uh, statutory section. Um, section eight is the municipal employees retirement board language. There were no, no changes there. Um, and section nine is the uh, municipal employees uh, statutory section as well. And I just change references to um, from committee to commission. And actually in this section, there were no specific references to the standards of conduct of the committee. So I did not have to uh, make those amendments there. Um, just looking for any questions. Okay, <laughs> section 10 is the task force language. Um, so uh, page 19, uh, just reviewing these changes that I think were discussed already from yesterday, but there are three members um, now who are appointed by the NEA and one member of the Vermont Troopers Association who shall be appointed by the president of the Troopers Association on page 20, um, there's some new language that we uh, discussed as well about uh, designee, member designees. So a member is only allowed to appoint one designee that will serve as the representative uh, who participates in task force proceedings. Um, the, I, I've just kept highlighted all of the powers and duties of the, the commission because I just, wasn't sure if anything was still sort of up for discussion, but uh, we went through through all of these before. The only place um, where I uh, made a change um, was the, uh, just find it here. Oh, on page 22, subdivision G. 
um, examining the permanent and temporary revenue streams to fund the Vermont State Employees Retirement System and Teachers Retirement System, including a review of whether all or part of retirement income should be tax exempt. Representative Hooper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Since we just went over, um, uh, where is it, it's item C, uh, I'd call your attention to the email that just came in from the treasurer where she once again um, kind of declines to have her director of retirement on the commission and some other points. So let's uh, take a moment to have a committee discussion about that, um, acknowledging that, uh, that, that that request um, has come into our inboxes. Um, I, I sort of disagree. Um, I guess I'll just throw that out there to begin with. Um, the director of retirement has uh, knowledge about the functioning of the retirement system and the benefit structures of the retirement system and is a critical contributant to the process of a task force understanding um, how the retirement system works, particularly given that um, employees in the teacher's system uh, may not be at all aware of what the retirement um, benefit structure is for the various groups in the state employees system and vice versa. Um, I think it's important to have the director of retirement at the table. Um, Representative LeClaire. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I have to say, I totally agree with you. I think it's extremely important to have that person involved too. So there's no question about what the current benefit package looks like and the eligibility for it versus any prospective proposed changes going forward. So I, I think it's in very important this person has a participating role here. Committee discussion? Agree. All right. Um, can I just do a straw poll here? Are we peaceful with uh, saying that we would like to have the inclusion of the director of retirement. All right, I'm seeing a majority of thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you, Rep LaFave. I think we can jump back into it. Sure. So um, as I mentioned, I, I kept everything highlighted in terms of the tasks, but the only one that was changed was that reference to reviewing the tax exempt uh, status of the of retirement income. Um, subsection D, stakeholder input. Uh, so there is input being sought from uh, including through public hearings from affected stakeholders, including those impacted by issues of inequities. And the task force uh, is being asked to consult with representatives designated by the Supreme Court acting in its con constitutional role as the administrator of the ju judicial branch, group D members of the state employees retirement system and members of the state employees retirement system who are employees of the Department of Corrections. Yeah. On page 23, I've made a change by adding a new subsection F. Uh, this allows for leave time for public employees, members of the task force, uh, that they shall be granted reasonable leave time by their employer, employers to attend task force meetings. Um, subsection H, uh, just uh, highlighted again, was the... Uh, the date for calling the meeting of June 15th, 2021. And then on page, page 24, I've changed the number of meetings in subsection I uh, that members can get reimbursement and compensation for to 15. And that's in uh, both subdivisions uh, one and two. And then section 11 is just uh, language that says that ledge council during the stat rev uh, process that we go through over the summer 
shall replace Vermont Pension Investment Committee with Vermont Pension Investment Commission throughout the statutes as needed uh, for consistency with sections one through nine of this act, as long as uh, these revisions have no other uh, effect on the meaning of the statutes. Excellent. All right, um, final committee discussion. Anything that you thought was going to be in this draft that that you missed or all of the above? Uh, Representative Hooper. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. N not specifically to that, but something caused me to remember a conversation I had last week uh, about health care and the possibility of changing uh, the official retirement date of people to putting them in jeopardy of losing that. I asked the treasurer uh, her opinion on it. It sent her scurrying for other information and she hasn't gotten back yet. Uh, I wonder if the language we have included covers the commission taking things like that into consideration. I mean, the point was if you, in the old version, have people working till 67, they decide they don't want to, they don't hit a normal retirement date uh, because of the plan change, they may or may not, a decision is still out, be eligible to continue with health care. I'm not concerned that the commission wouldn't be able to take that into consideration. Um, it okay. Seems to me that the, uh, you know, whatever the, the task force comes up with would have to come back to us anyway. So um, it'll end up back on our lap if the task force hasn't considered that. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we had the conversation. All right, other committee discussion. Uh, Rep. Hopsky. Thank you. It's not specifically about changes to be made to the bill. I just want to say that I sort of continue to have significant unmet concerns with the bill and the process that we've taken to get here. It feels like the bill has sort of repeatedly been offered to us very quickly with little time to take it in and very little time offered to explore avenues for changes. And there's still witnesses that I had hoped to hear from that haven't been called. There is still questions that I have that really haven't been answered. And so this just, this feels like it sets this up to have people cry that it is unfair and it is unbalanced and hasn't fully been vetted. And I really want this committee to be a collaborative process, a place where people feel like their voices can truly be heard. And it doesn't feel like we're beginning on that foot. And so I just, I just wanted to voice my concerns. And I really do hope that as the bill continues on its journey, it is improved and that the concerns are addressed to really create a just and collaborative path forward. I have a real commitment to that. And so I hope that we, we as a larger body can get it to that space. Other committee discussion? Representative Merwicki. I could see you leaning in. Well, thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. And uh, I um, want to share appreciation for your work here. Uh, you have been assigned a, a, a huge task um, and I appreciate how much leeway you've given right along this whole process. Uh, most especially, I, I think you have made exceptional accommodations for certain members of the committee to have lots of time here. And I, I wanna share that appreciation because I know you have been re receiving, if we've been receiving pressure I think what you've been getting is exponentially more than that. And under that, I think you've comported yourself admirably uh, in a very civil way, even when things have not always gone that way for, with you. And uh, I wanna share my appreciation here 
and for the whole committee too. It's been a very civil process. It's been a long process. And uh, I, I don't doubt that uh, we can always get to a point where we think, well, we could have done something more, but it's, it's, it's time to vote. And I'm gonna move that we, we approve this bill. All right, can I ask you to refine your motion with uh, a motion to approve draft 1.3 with the timestamp of today's date at 1054? I can do that. Okay. I'm scrolling back up to the top of the bill right now though. So um, I, I move that we approve draft 1.3 at 1054. And uh, and I can't remember the number of the bill right now, but well, it's a draft. It's a draft request number. That's why it's hard to remember. On the subject will... of executive branch retirement systems. Yes. Committee bill. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Representative Hooper. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll address this to the motion, I guess. Uh, I agree with the civility. I agree with the opportunity. I agree with just about everything that Tanya said. Um, this bill has moved a decent amount in my uh, opinion. It has not moved enough in the issues that I find important and it has not recognized the voices that I heard from Vermonters on those two public hearings adequately. Uh, to look on it favorably. And I'm sorry to say that. Thank you. Representative LaFay. Thank you, Madam Chair. May I get help uh, look before we do the vote, looking at the total number of participants and how many we consider management versus participants just to have those numbers solidly uh, on the record right now, because I think I am confusing some things and I'd appreciate a little bit of help. So that is, uh, that is a matter of how you define. And, uh, and that really gets to the heart, I think, of uh, some of the disagreement or misunderstanding about what balance looks like on the task force. Um, because I don't consider uh, legislative members of a task force to be management. Uh, I consider them to be members of the legislative body to whom um, these statutory changes need to be presented. And, and uh, so we, at this point, have three um, appointees to the task force from the teacher's retirement system, three appointees uh, who are members in the state employee system, um, three House, three Senate, and, uh, and those two administrative appointees and the uh, director of retirement. One second, please. I'm doing math. <laughs> so the emails that I have been getting saying that it's not equal would be that they were feeling that we have three more participants on quote management side than the participants do being represented. Is that what I'm hearing? I am not quite sure how to defend the viewpoint of people who are sending you emails. They're probably similar to mine, um, but uh, I don't know how to answer that. Okay. I, my concern is, is if we're doing this task force and we're taking the time because we're answering the um the the ask for more participation and people are um feeling like it's not equal because there are three people or three more that people maybe would consider management versus a participant um if, if that's where we're having some of this friction i would just appreciate that clarification versus something else that i might be missing thank you representative gannon um, 
Let, let me try to answer um, Representative Lefebvre's um, um, question. Um, there, there are six union members on this task force. There are also six legislators. Um, I don't consider myself part of management. Um, I think I represent all in Vermonters, including state employees and teachers. Um, those, that is my duty here. So real members of management, I think would be considered the commissioner for financial regulation, the commissioner for financial resources. Um, those are the two positions um, that are in the administration that are currently on the task force. Um, as I think you've heard, the director of the retirement division from the treasurer's office is responsible for administering um, the, the pension system. And their role on it is, is to provide the expertise I think that the task force needs to, to totally understand the benefit structure of both the teachers and the state pensions. Um, so yes, I've received, I don't know, hundreds of emails in the past two days, all saying that the balance um, is um, somehow wrong. But I'll be honest, I, I am starting to feel insulted by those comments because it seems to lump us um, with management as potentially enemies of labor. And I totally agree with, disagree with that. Thank you. Madam Chair, yes. may, I, may yeah. I ask one more question? And I apologize. So I thought we just said that we wanted judiciary represented here and the troopers. So where did they go? Are they included with the, we could you help me with yeah. that please? Yep, the draft that we have in front of us specifies that one uh, one member of the task force be appointed by the president of the Vermont Troopers Association, and then among the stakeholder input, we are uh, we've got a specific phrase that asks them to hear from uh, members of the judiciary. Uh, so that is the that is. Um, not necessarily giving them a seat on the task force, but but requiring that the task force hear uh, hear their perspective and take stakeholder input from uh, from the judiciary. So one of the VSCA members needs to be appointed from the Troopers Association, not in addition to the three members. There's two who will be appointed by the president of the VSEA and one appointed by the president of the Troopers Association. So that's a total of three seats at the table in the broad category of state employee um, plan members, uh, two from the whole VSEA and one from the Troopers. Okay, my apologies. That's where I was messed up. I thought they were, my apologies. Okay. No worries. Thank you. Representative Hooper. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think that part of the devil in the detail here is that we continue to look at this as labor and management and it's not. It's beneficiary and plan, plan sponsor sort of thing. I mean, when you talk about who has ultimate control over what happens with the retirement plan, you're looking at the people right here in front of you now. It is the legislature. It is not the commissioner of this, that, or the other thing. They just happen to work for the governor. Um, I, I think that is the line because quite frankly, although I give great deference to the chair, I doubt that somebody is gonna be appointed that is completely 180 degrees opposite from the position that leadership has taken on this. I, I would hope that that is a consideration. Um, and lastly, uh, in deference to what the treasurer has said about uh, the director of retirement, might we consider making that a member of the commission without a vote, which would somewhat insulate that individual from, um, it wouldn't surprise me if she would abstain from all votes anyway, but that might uh, be a good compromise for the treasurer's position. This is actually an employee of hers. Um, is there any reason why, uh, legislative council question, I guess, is there any reason why someone who's a sitting member of the task force, uh, couldn't simply abstain from a vote? Um, not that I can think of immediately. I mean, the only situation that could come up is if, uh, the committee 
is not able to have a majority to, to make a take an action. Um, but there are there are a lot of members on this committee. So I think if one of them um, is abstaining from a vote, um, then that probably wouldn't be a problem. Uh, I would, yeah. And maybe I might need to think for another minute about whether there are any other reasons why that would uh, create a problem in this situation. If I may, Madam Chair, it's only because I think Treasurer is trying to insulate her staff from being a part of anything that comes out and drawing negative fire because of it. I have not talked to her about it, but that would, I think, be the reason. Other committee discussion on that? Rep McCarthy. I think we've done a really great job working together, even though we don't all agree on some of the finer details of putting together a group of people who bring a diverse set of both skills and experience, which I think we need in this uh, particular case of having the uh, director of the retirement division there. Um, so I feel like we should keep that language the way it is strongly. I also wanna say that I feel very strongly that we have a balanced task force and that we've done an extraordinary amount to listen to the concerns that folks have had over the past few months as we've taken up this very difficult task um, and that our work is going to go beyond this task force. We'll be back next year considering the recommendations. I, um, I really want, I think it's time that we move this language forward and um, I think I stay grounded in a desire to continue to listen, to make sure that we set our pension systems on a sustainable path so that folks who are working in our public sector, who are counting on this money being for, there for them so that they can have a secure retirement, that they can count on it and they feel confident in it. And I think some of the, the posturing and the emails that we're getting that have misinformation or are based on misinformation I want to stay sympathetic and understand why the emotions are so high. It's because people are talking about their ability to survive with dignity in retirement. I, and I stay rooted in that. And so I want to move this bill forward so that we can get this work done. Thanks. Representative Anthony. I, I share everything that my good friend from St. Albans said. Uh, and I, I'm sure that the director of retirement could, would, may always uh, abstain. I just think that puts her, I agree with uh, Rep Hooper, it does put her in an awkward position. And I'm not sure she's there for a resource, why it would make any difference whether she were a voting member or not. So I'm sorry, I, I never thought of that. Uh, I feel badly and I'm Sorry that uh, the treasurer waited until the eleventh hour to to sign, sound the uh, the worry alarm. Um, I, I can't excuse that, but here we are, and I just think that 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 observation resonates with me. I could go either way. I don't think it'll hold up the bill, and I don't disagree with anything that uh, either any of my colleagues have said so far about balance. I don't think it changes anything, frankly, other than making the treasurer a little bit more comfortable. Thank you. All right. How are we feeling, folks? <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor here to uh, to to move draft one point three with a timestamp of today's date and ten fifty four. Are we ready to vote? All right, Representative Colston, take it away. I shall call the roll. Gannon. Yes. Mariki. Yes. Leclerc. Yes. Hooper. No. Colston. Yes. Anthony. We need you to unmute. Anthony. 
Yes. Thank you. Mihovsky. No. Lefebvre. Yes. Higley. Yes. McCarthy. Yes. Copeland Hanses. Yes. Nine yeses, two noes. Thank you, committee, Thank you. for your great work and attention to this uh, complicated and um, an intense topic. Um, I very much appreciate the <clears throat> the respectful way we have come together and uh, and hashed through all of these issues. Um, I'm going to ask, it won't surprise anyone that I, I'm going to ask Representative Gannon to report this on the floor, but I'd also like to ask if Representative LeClaire would be willing to be uh, a collaborator on that. I'll do whatever I can to make the representative from Wilmington look good. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you to Becky Wasserman for your uh, hard work on this. Um, this is, uh, I feel like we've been at this for a year and a half already, um, <laughs> even though it's only been a few weeks. <laughs> um, COVID, COVID time. COVID time, yep. I will be sending, I will be sending the edited uh, version uh, yes. to you when that's ready so that uh, we can get it introduced. Yeah, so let's um, let's make sure that we get that uh, that edited version that has those a um, uh, couple of fixes that weren't caught before we sat down to look at the final substance of the bill. Uh, so I will leave Rep. Colston and Rep. Gannon to collaborate on how this gets um, delivered. And thank you all. Uh, have a good lunch break, and I will see you on the floor.